A highly evolved predator landed on Earth and preyed on those living on the said planet. In order to protect her tribe, a skilled female warrior of the Comanche Nation bravely fought against the predator. In 1719, there was a tribe called the Comanche living in the northern Great Plains. A young woman named Naru, a trained healer of the tribe, was busily digging up carrots when she decided to secretly practice again. Finding some privacy with Sarii, her dog Naru secretly trained her throwing skills. She heard an animal sound coming from deeper into the woods and peeked from behind a fallen tree to see a white-tailed elk. Naru slowly stood as she prepared to throw her axe at the elk, but the sound of the thunder rumbling scared the elk away. Naru and Sari went after the elk. However, Sarai's tail got caught by a trap, and Naru forgot all about the elk as she helped Sari, who adorably licked her face in gratitude. The rumbling of the thunder was heard again, but this time followed by what seemed to be an explosion coming from the sky. Naru went to the cliff to see the sky clearly and saw lightning striking something falling from the sky. Naru believed that it was the Thunderbird and told her brother Tabe about it while they were bird hunting. Naru was excited as she told Tabe that she's been practicing and she's finally ready for her big hunt, which they call Kutamia. Tabe was worried, not only because he didn't want Naru to be in any form of danger, but also because Naru wanted to hunt something that's been hunting them. But there is nothing he can do to convince Naru, who has always wanted to be a hunter. Naru headed back home and fed Sarai before honing her axe beside her mother, Aruka, who was making medicine. Aruka asked her daughter why she wanted to be a hunter so badly when she's good at so many other things. Naru replies that it was because everyone thinks she doesn't have what it takes to be a hunter. Tabe came in with a red tail, and Aruka praised his son for another successful hunt. Naru, on the other hand, could only look down in envy. Aruka asked Naru to get her more orange tatsuya, a natural wildflower that Comanche healers commonly use in making medicines. Naru did as she was told to and gathered orange tatsuya. Naru saw the Comanche hunters, including Tabe, rushing and asked what was wrong. She learned that a lion had taken another Comanche member named Puhi. She followed them to hunt, and Tabe told the other Comanche hunters to let her stay with them. Since Naru has been practicing, she is skilled enough to track the lion with them, and since she knows medicine, they will be able to send immediate help to Puhi in case they find him alive. After searching around for a while, Naru, Tabe, and the hunters found Puhi lying unconsciously on the ground, barely breathing, but still alive. Naru immediately healed Puhi, while Tabe and the other hunters prepared to hunt the lion. Meanwhile, an alien predator had landed on Earth and walked around hunting for prey. Using its invincibility, the predator got close to a snake and skinned it. Night came and the hunters set out to bring Puhi back to their camp before they went hunting. Naru informed Tabe of her suspicions about what really happened. The lion took Puhi and brought him to its den, but somehow Puhi was still alive and left alone by the lion, which was odd. Naru believed that something must have distracted the lion, and she wanted to find out what it was. Naru wanted to come with Tabe and the hunters to hunt the lion down, but Tabe refused. He stated that Naru should stay with Puhi, as he needs Naru's help more than they do. As they were leaving, Naru noticed a skinned snake on the ground and was shocked to see it still moving. Then she saw a huge footprint and a trail of blood leading up the tree. A Comanche hunter approached Naru and reminded her that they needed to leave. Naru showed them the footprint, and the hunter only assumed it was from a bear. But the footprint was too big for it to be just a bear. And if it really was a bear, then it must have been on its hind legs. Add to that the skinned snake. There is no way a bear could do that. And Naru was afraid there was something far more dangerous out there in the woods. Naru went to warn Tabe of her suspected unknown creature, but Tabe told her that they couldn't focus on Naru's discoveries because they were already in the lion's den and they had to deal with it first. Laying on the ground, hidden from the lion, Naru suggested that they get some bait and climb up to wait for the lion. Paka, the other Comanche hunter that was with them, disagreed because they are hunters and hunters don't wait. They go straight into hunting. However, Tabe agreed and told Naru that it was time for her kutamiya. With Tabe's encouraging words, Naru climbed up the tree with Paka to wait for the lion, and the two of them talked for a bit. When Paka saw Naru sharpening her axe again, he told her that it was useless to keep on doing it when she's too afraid to use it against their prey. He was smug as he talked about how he's going to be the one to kill the lion, 
only to get pounced by said lion. The lion jumped up the tree, and Naru stood her ground as she stood at the edge of the branch. However, a strange sound and light stole Naru's attention momentarily, and the lion quickly pounced on her, sending her to the ground and rendering her unconscious. Naru was taken back home, and Aruka tended to her. When Naru regained consciousness, she worried about her brother, who she was told went after the lion after carrying Naru back home. Naru wanted to follow Tabe, but Aruka advised her not to. Aruka told her daughter that she was wrong to think that Kutamiya meant to prove she could hunt, because what Kutamiya truly meant was to survive. They heard a child announcing Tabe's return, and the Comanche tribe members proudly looked on as a bloody Tabe returned with the beheaded lion. Tabe earned the title of war chief, and the whole tribe celebrated for him. Naru, on the other hand, was still worried, as she believed there was something out there that was far more dangerous than anything anyone had ever faced. When Tabe saw Naru walking away, he stopped her from leaving, and Naru was disappointed when she realized that even her own brother didn't believe in her. The next day, Naru woke up early in the morning and left their camp without anyone noticing. She found another huge footprint on the ground and used a stick that Sari gave her to check its size. Naru then attached a rope to her axe to make it easier to retrieve it again after throwing it. With her upgraded axe, hunting down a few rabbits was a piece of cake for Naru. She ate and rested with Sari for the night before continuing her journey the next day. Meanwhile, the predator had hunted down a wolf and went to a cave, where he sprayed something on the wolf's skull before attaching it to his belt as a souvenir. Naru walked out of the woods and into the clearing. Naru was horrified at the sight of the innocent animals who had been brutally killed and prayed for them. She continued her search when she noticed white strings attached to the trees. She stepped towards the strings but fell into a bog pit. She used her axe to escape the bog pit, and after several mistakes, Naru finally succeeded. Naru cleaned herself up and crafted a bow she could use to hunt down the grizzly bear by the river. But the string on the bow snapped and it captured the attention of the grizzly bear. The bear ran up to Naru, who was still trying to fix the bow, but Sarai bravely distracted the grizzly bear so it would chase him instead, giving Naru enough time to fix the bow and go down the river. However, Sarai strangely came running back in fear, and Naru hid before the bear could get to her. Naru was confused when the bear suddenly turned its back on her and started fighting against an invincible enemy. Naru saw something glitching and was terrified at the sight of a huge predator lifting the bear up. Naru quickly swam away, letting the river take her away from whatever she saw, and the predator only watched her do so. Naru started walking through the woods when she bumped into Comanche hunters that had been sent by Tab to look for her. Naru told them about the predator, who looked like Mopitzel, a monster from a child's story they had read. The Comanche hunters made fun of her, and Naru decided to just turn her back against them and leave. But one hunter stopped her from doing so. He threw her on the ground, and Naru was knocked down and tied, preventing her from leaving. The hunters soon realized that Naru was telling the truth when the predator came to kill them one by one. Naru untied herself and quickly fled from the scene, trying to escape from the predator with another hunter. But the hunter was caught and brutally killed, while Naru never stopped running. However, Naru's leg got caught by a trap, and she was found caged by the Frenchmen. An interpreter, Raphael Adelini, approached Naru to ask her about the predator. Just like Naru, the Frenchmen had also encountered the predator, and they wanted to capture the creature. But Naru refused to talk, and the leader of the Frenchmen, known as Big Beard, revealed Tabe, whom they had also captured. They made a cut on Tabe's stomach in front of Naru, and then tied them up together to use as bait for the predator. It was a huge mistake for the Frenchman, as the predator killed them first before making his way towards Naru and Taba. But the Frenchmen were smarter than they looked and had already set up a trap. Unfortunately for them, they still weren't smarter than the predator, who had easily wiped out everyone who came to mess with him. While the predator and the Frenchmen were fighting, Naru told Tabo that the predator hunts in a different way, because when the predator found her trapped earlier, he only left her alone. Naru and Tabin then seized the opportunity to escape. Tabe went to the Frenchman's horses while Naru headed to the Frenchman's camp to save Sari from the remaining Frenchman who stayed in the camp. Naru ordered Sari to go to Tabe while she stayed behind to bravely face the Frenchman. After Naru defeated the Frenchman, an injured Raphael showed her the gun and promised to teach her how to use it as long as she helped him. Raphael taught Naru how to use the gun and Naru gave Raphael the orange totsia to heal him. 
When they heard the sound of the birds flying away in a hurry, Naru quickly left and hid behind a tree. Raphael was still unable to stand due to his injuries and decided to play dead. The orange Tatsuya that Naru gave him made him feel cold, and due to his reduced heat, the predator cannot detect him. But then the predator stepped on Raphael, causing him to scream and get killed. Then Sairi came to Naru's aid, and Naru watched in fear as the predator aimed at Sari. Fortunately, Tabi came right on time and hit the back of the predator's head, causing his mask to come off. Naru was hit with the realization that the predator has very bad eyesight, especially without the mask on, and came up with an idea. While Tabe was facing the predator, Naru crafted a medicine made out of the orange Tatsuya. She then ran to her brother to help him fight against the predator, but Tabe only told her to run. Since Tabe attacked the predator, the latter now thinks he's the threat, while Naru isn't. Even if they escaped together, the predator would never stop hunting Tabe down. Naru watched in sorrow as the predator struck Tabe. Tabe, even in his last moments, still fought to protect Naru, and the latter abided by her brother's wishes, fleeing and accepting her brother's sacrifice. In the northern Great Plains, the hunters who were sent to find Tabe, Naru and the other hunters, returned with bad news. Everyone was dead, and the tribe was stricken with grief. Naru, on the other hand, stayed by the river until she fell asleep. When she saw Big Beard nearby, she remembered how Big Beard made her brother bleed in front of her and captured him. Big Beard and the rest of the Frenchmen easily captured Naru, thinking that she wasn't a hunter like them, just like the predator who didn't deem her a threat. Naru decided to use that to her advantage. Since she wasn't a threat to anyone, not even the predator, no one would think that she would make a move. Naru drunk the orange Tatsuya she made and stood still, watching as the predator slowly stalked towards the big beard and then killed him. The predator turned his back on Naru and the latter shot him in the back of the head. It wasn't enough to kill the predator, but it was enough to send his mask flying off his face. Naru grabbed the mask and climbed on top of a tree branch, waiting and praying on the predator. When the predator approaches, Naru pounces. She repeatedly stabbed the predator with her ax before she was thrown away. With her skills and the predator's bad eyesight, Naru was at an advantage, but fighting against an alien predator was still proven to be nearly impossible, as he was a lot stronger than Naru. Naru was able to cut off one of the predator's arms before she was cornered. Since Naru is weaker, she used wit to win against the predator. She caught the predator off guard and climbed on top of him, tying the rope of her axe around him and sending him into the bog pit. Naru waited as the predator climbed out of the bog pit and aimed his gun at her. Naru told the predator that that was as far as he would go, and he had lost. Unbeknownst to the predator, his mask was stuck in between two stones facing him. So when he pulled the trigger, his own mask detected him and identified him as a threat. And so he killed himself with the bullet that was meant for Naru. Seeing that she had won, Naru screamed in delight and returned to her nation with the predator's head. The whole Comanche tribe welcomed her as she threw the predator's head on the ground in front of the tribe leaders. She suggested moving somewhere else where they could be more safe. A ritual was performed, and Naru became the new war chief of the Comanche tribe. At the start of the closing credits, a ledger art painting summarized everything that happened in the movie, and its ending showed a depiction of three predator vessels entering the earth and heading towards the tribe.